Hi, I'm Andy, and in this video we'll be exploring how to attack, detect, and defend against the abuse of image file and execution options. Despite the name, this technique has nothing to do with pictures. Image file in this context is referring to a binary image, the compiled version of a computer program which can be run or executed. The execution options part refers to altering of how that program is executed. This is usually desirable when debugging a misbehaving application, however it can also be used to establish persistence and for privilege escalation. Image file execution options are set in the Windows registry under HKey Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Windows NT, Current Version, Image File Execution Options, and within a key matching the name of the target binary. For example, here are the image file execution options defined for several executables on a fresh install of Windows 10. The option we are interested in is called Debugger. This tells Windows to always use a debugger to launch a particular application. Which one? Well, the one that we specify in the registry value. Here I've added a key for notepad.exe to use the debugger provided in the Windows 10 SDK. Now if I try to launch Notepad, it gets run from the debugger. Under the hood, Windows is replacing our request to launch notepad.exe with launching the debugger instead, and passing the path of notepad.exe as an argument for the debugger to handle. We don't actually have to use a real debugger. We can instead use any other application of our choosing. Here I'm specifying the Windows calculator, calc.exe. Now if I try to launch notepad, Windows launches the calculator instead. The calculator app simply ignores the argument passed to it, and so Notepad is never launched. So far, we have a nifty trick that we can play on someone to mess with them, but this can of course be used for more malicious purposes. Here's a small app to establish a reverse shell to another machine, and to appear less suspicious, it also runs whatever command is passed to it as an argument. I've copied it to this system with a nice generic unsuspicious name like launcher.exe, and configured an image file execution options key to use it as a debugger for notepad.exe. Now if I try to run notepad, it appears to run as expected, but also launches a reverse shell which connects back to a Kali machine on the same network. This provides a method of persistence which works across reboots and password changes, and even provides some opportunity to laterally move across different user accounts if used on a machine which has multiple users. I touched on another very specific case in my video on abusing Windows accessibility features. In that video, we simply replaced one EXE with another on the file system. Those same accessibility features can be targeted by this technique too. Here I'm telling Windows to run the command prompt, command.exe, instead of the screen magnifier, magnify.exe. I can trigger this from the lock screen or the logon screen providing persistence and privilege escalation to the system user. Another flavour of this technique is silent process exit monitoring. As the name suggests, this monitors a process and does something when it exits rather than when it's launched. Again, this is intended to be used when debugging applications, but can also be used for malicious purposes. Let's target the on-screen keyboard, osk.exe, in this example. To enable exit monitoring for a process, we first need to set a global flag value of 512, or 200 in hex. The rest of the configuration for this feature is set in a slightly different registry key which doesn't exist by default, silent process exit. We need to set a reporting mode of 1, and then specify the path of an executable to run for monitor process. Here I'm just using command.exe. There's a link in the video description to a page with further details on all of these config options. Now, whenever the on-screen keyboard exits, a command prompt will open. This can also be exploited at the lock screen, but note that the command prompt is not shown immediately. Instead, it is ready and waiting after unlocking. This makes it a little less useful as a method of local persistence, but still allows for privilege escalation to system, or could still be used to launch a reverse shell. There are plenty of permutations of these various options that might be more or less useful in various scenarios, depending on the objectives of an attacker. 
For example, launching a keylogger whenever a Bitcoin wallet app runs in order to capture a user's password. But let's move on to how we might detect whether a machine has been subject to such activity. It's relatively easy to detect the presence of this technique by examining the Windows registry for the debugger or monitor process values. This could be automated via scripting or scaled up using OS Query. Or made a little more user friendly by using Auto Runs, one of the tools available from Microsoft's SysInternals suite. Auto Runs scans a bunch of different locations which might be used to automatically launch programs. The Image File Execution Options registry key is one of these. Here we can see an entry for some of the malicious examples demonstrated earlier. Note, however, Auto Runs doesn't flag any use of the exit monitoring flavour of this technique. Whilst detecting whether this technique has been planted on a given machine may be fairly simple, actually defending against its use in the first place is far more challenging, as it essentially boils down to an abuse of a genuine Windows feature. As this technique relies on changing the registry, one obvious step is to restrict admin rights, so long as an attacker isn't able to use another technique to escalate their privileges. Some endpoint protection solutions can guard against common abuses, although coverage can be patchy. For example, retrying the Magnify example from earlier with Windows Defender running is unsuccessful. Defender will alert and block attempts to use this technique to replace the execution of common accessibility tools. But the silent process exit monitoring flavour of this technique can still successfully exploit the accessibility tools on a fully patched up-to-date Windows 10 build run in the latest Defender definitions. That about wraps up this video. If you found it useful, please do give it a like and consider subscribing if you want more of this sort of content. Drop a note in the comments if there's anything you think I missed around attacking, detecting and defending against the abuse of image file execution options, or if you have a good idea of what topic I should cover next. I'll see you next time.